scientific consensus agrees. Rudolph's nose is red. It helps Santa find his way through the Arctic blizzards. But why his nose is red has bothered BMJ readers for years. Is it a rhinophyma, rhinitis, or just windburn? But before we get onto the arteriodactyle nasal physiology, some medicine. This is the BMJ after all. Being sick and being critically ill is extreme physiology. It's when the body is being attacked from all sides. So to understand how the body responds to that is a very important area of physiology. So to understand why if a normal healthy body is in extreme conditions, how we are able to cope with that and why we are not able to cope with that when we're in an intensive care unit is for us a very, very interesting area because it can teach us what is the missing link in the normal physiology. Where better to study extreme adaptation than in the Arctic? And if you can get a Christmas BMJ paper out of it, so much the better. So John and his colleague Dan went up to the University of Tromsø's Department of Arctic and Marine Biology to work with Lars. Hi there, Lars. How are you doing? Fine, Good thank to see you, you again. This Hi, is nice Dan Milstein, Dan, our nice fellow. To nice to meet so, you. Welcome to rainy Tromsø. Yes. <laughs> so how are the reindeers doing? They are just waiting for us, but oh. we can step inside first and okay. have a talk. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. In Tromsø, reindeer are part of the faculty. Yeah, we are uh, running a reindeer on a treadmill and the purpose is to uh, achieve what uh, is natural for reindeer, namely that when they exercise in the wild they get warm. And uh, to simulate that in the laboratory we have a treadmill and we have well-trained animals who, uh, which have done this several times before. Where uh, reindeer typically live in northern Norway, they can encounter uh, temperatures down to minus 40, minus 50 degrees centigrade. To help them protect uh, from the cold, they have this heavy fur which insulates very well. But in the instance these animals start to run, then they very rapidly become overheated. And we use a thermovision camera to visualize the changes in uh, temperature profile. They therefore need a system to dispose of uh, large amounts sometimes of excess heat. And that is achieved by panting through their nose and mouth. And thereby the blood is cooled and the animal can send this blood either down to the body for general body cooling or it has, like some other uh, artiodactyles or clubbed animals, an alternative blood pathway which can deliver some of this cold blood to the base of the brain for what we refer to as selective brain cooling. Okay, so here we see how uh, the uh, function of the nose turns out in the infrared picture. As you see, the uh, coloration here, which reflects the temperature, high temperature when it is yellow, stands out from the much colder other areas, for example, on the neck here and on the antlers, which are obviously much colder. Rudolph's nose is really red. It definitely is. But what does Rudolph's red nose have to do with a physiologist from Rotterdam? In our physiology experiments, we started to realize that in situations of critical care like sepsis and shock and resuscitation, uh, that systemic hemodynamic variables were looking very normal, but the problem was in the microcirculation. So in the late 90s, uh, we developed a handheld microscope, uh, which allowed us for the first time to look at organ surfaces in patients and to observe their microcirculation with the flowing red blood cells and the leukocytes at the bedside. And then we proceeded to look at states of sepsis especially, which as you know is a big, big problem in critically ill uh, patients and of course is also one of the biggest killers actually next to myocardial infarction. Uh, one of the big problems of sepsis is that uh, we can improve the cardiac output, we can improve the systemic circulation, but there are area, there are still signs of ischemia, of hypoxemia occurring. And this is the big 
paradox in understanding sepsis. How is that possible? The reason we found out was because there are areas that are getting too much next to areas that are getting too little. And this you can only see if you see the microcirculation and you see the images, you see areas which are being perfused massively next to areas which are ischemic. So if you want to treat sepsis, you have to recruit the ischemic areas, the organs that are not participating. Right, now that we've seen that, Dan, I think it's time for us to look at your uh, nose microcirculation. So uh, right. let's do the experiment. Well, Lars, here we're doing a measurement in the microcirculation of the human nose. First of all, there are these hairpins. Uh, we call them that because they've got U type of uh, a morphology. They're basically for thermal regulation. You will also see it in skin, actually. And the second structure that we see here, a beautiful crypt again, uh, which is one of Dan's uh, mucosal services. And you see how the uh, blood vessels line up in the perimeter. One of the great advantages of, uh, of being able to measure the microcirculation this way is that we can look at vascular reactivity, uh, two different uh, stimuli. So we can look at functional pharmacology of the uh, different vessel structures mm. in the nose. So that's what we hope to be able to uh, do with this technology in human noses and the pathology of nose uh, conditions. Mm. The number of vessels and the density of the smallest vessels in these reindeer noses are much higher than in human noses, which of course explains why their noses are red, as we have seen in our experiment earlier this morning with a thermal camera. We can see the um, glands which produces the mucus. There are a lot more of these glands than there are in humans. Do you think that there is a lot more necessity for glands of this sort in the reindeer yes. nose? Yeah, definitely. Given uh, that uh, reindeer depend on use of their nose as a thermoregulatory organ. Most of the heat is actually carried as uh, uh, water vapor through the process of evaporating liquid water into water which costs a lot of energy of and that energy or heat is stolen from the mucosa and thereby the blood inside the mucosa is cooled so the nose is extremely important to reindeer in thermoregulation. And that's why Rudolf's nose is red. <laughs>